Now we're going to talk about the datamite settings for your Nursa Dino, your Nursa Engine Dino. We talked about Dino on previous movies. Now we're going to talk about the datamite specs. These are equally critical. And what we've got here is in your channel settings, you've seen we've been through this before, where we find which channel you're possibly on and get this setting set up. Another setting is over here. Do you have a weather station? You probably, with the USB, you're going to either say none or internal sensors. These are two options that are only used for very old systems that you have internal sensors. Sampling rate, 50. That's what we would recommend for everybody. It works real well. And now we got your actual channel settings. Now, this is an inertia dyno. And we said in our dyno specs that we have an engine dyno with a clutch. That means there is no direct coupling between the engine and the dyno. So we need to measure both RPMs to be accurate. And that's why in this use column, the channels that are turned on, these two RPMs here, we've got both engine RPM and frequency 2, which is dyno RPM, turned on. And you can see here, um, here's your sensor and calibration. We have one cylinder two stroke. To change the sensor and calibration, you click on that box and it comes up with your settings here. And even though we're, we're running four stroke engines, most four stroke cart motors, which is what this is, a one cylinder cart motor, it fires every rev. It's got wasted spark. And that's why it fires just like a two stroke. And that's why it might be a two stroke when it's actually a four stroke engine. We call it a two stroke. This we'll get into later. This, for most your purposes, you're going to say use all pulses. And if you like the changes, you're going to keep calibration. Here we have dyno wheel RPM. This one is critical. This is actually the more important than engine RPM to get right. And we've set it up for, we got two magnets on this dyno. The data name here is anything you want to give it. This is what's going to show up in your graphs and report. So it, even though it's dyno wheel RPM, you could call it uh, air-fuel ratio, and it's going to show up on the graphs as air-fuel ratio. What we use in the program for doing the calculations is this option here. What is it actually called? When we, say dyno, when we see dyno wheel RPM in the software, we know this is where your power is being generated. We've got to measure this very carefully. If you would call this other RPM and call it dyno down here, the program is going to say, you've got no dyno RPM. I don't know where to get the inertia readings from. So make sure you call it dyno wheel RPM. And this is on those quick start sheets of paper. We've got two magnets on this thing. Typically, I don't recommend it, but this user happened to use two magnets. And we'll get into that a little bit later why that can be a problem. Uh, if you get two, if you say you're using two magnets, though, you've got to get them very evenly spaced. So anyway, I'm going to keep the settings. I could have backed out of there. And here you see the sensor and calibration for the first two frequency inputs. We've said we've got internal sensors here for weather. And you can see that we got the weather sensors are turned on down here with yeses. And down here are your thermocouple channels. We've got a head temp and an exhaust temp. And you just click on them. And you can see the type here. You can see a little picture of the type we've picked. And there you can see there's our Datamite 3 box. If you had a Datamite Mini, this is the box that you'd probably be using, an external thermocouple amp that wouldn't be internal. And over the years, we've had some of these other types of channels. These are all pretty much external thermocouple amps. But with the Datamite 3, the silver box, we have these internal sensors. So anyway, that's how we set that. Now, just like in the dyno specs, when you've made your changes here, you want to click on File and Save as Master Datamite Specs. Datamite Specs are the settings that represent your datamite right now today. And I say, why would they not be? Well, let's say you made a change today that you went from maybe yesterday, in all tests previous, you had dyno wheel RPM with just one magnet. And now you're changing it to two magnets because you found out that you need two magnets because your dyno wheel, let's say, is spinning very slowly and you need two magnets to be accurate. You don't want all your old tests to be screwed up now with this change. You want the software to realize your old tests were done with one magnet and your new tests are done with two magnets. 
So let's say you set this to two magnets and back out here. And let's say you open an old test. If you open an old test that had one magnet in it, and let's say that happened to be what was on the main screen when you started your new test, the program would mistakenly think you had one magnet because that was what was the setting in that old test, that you had one magnet in there instead of two. And, and that's the problem. We need these master data mite specs to know what is your dyno today and how is your data mite channel set up for today. Going back into the data mite specs, here we have weather station calibrations for these internal sensors. And if you saw the sheet of paper that came with your data mite, these are all probably set to zero. And we, I won't get into this touch too much, mostly because we almost always recommend keep these at zero. We could be very precise about calibrating these sensors. The problem is, if we were, you'd have to put in a number here. And let's say you didn't put the number in right or forgot to put it in, then you put it in. You would have variation in your tests from something that is trying to reduce variation, the weather calibration. If we are off a tenth of a, uh, let's say a tenth of an inch of barometer, we're going to be off a tenth of an inch of barometer by leaving it at zero rather than trying to be real fussy on this for all your tests. All your tests are going to be off the same amount. And as far as you're concerned, you're going to get much better repeatability than putting in a number here and maybe forgetting to put it in sometimes or going back and getting an old test. And, and that's why we leave all the calibrations at zero unless they are significantly off. And it almost never happens. The factory cals on these sensors we get are very close. So we just leave everything at zero. So we recommend you leave everything at zero unless the sheet of paper that came with your data might said you should put a number in there. Now what can often happen is if we said our dyno type was an engine with clutch, we need two RPMs. But let's say something happens. Let's say your dyno wheel sensor died for some reason. It hit a magnet and it's broken. Or let's say you got an engine that isn't giving you a good clean engine RPM signal. In that case, you only have one RPM sensor that works. And then what you can do is, and I'm going to do something. I'm going to click on File, Save As. I'm going to save this thing to a different name. One RPM here. And I'm going to put in the comments here. Okay, I uh, changed the comments. And I'm going to go into dyno specs. And instead of engine with clutch, I'm going to say there's engine no clutch. Now, as soon as you say that, this number here, the total gear ratio, now becomes much more important. Before, it was only used for, um, for clutch slippage calculations. But now, it's going to be used to figure out torque and horsepower. So I'm going to click on back. It says, do you want to save this change? You say yes. Do you want to save it as the master dyno specs that represent your dyno right now today? And you say yes. Okay. The reason we did this is because we don't have a good dyno RPM. So let's go through here and it could be we don't have a good dyno RPM. We don't have a good engine RPM. If we go in now and say blank that out, blank out dyno rpm the program will see there's no dyno rpm it says i've got to use engine rpm and from engine rpm i'm going to calculate what the dyno rpm is based on that 4.14 gear ratio or if you say you got a dyno rpm and you don't have to turn this off you can just leave it on if it sees the dyno rpm that there's a good dyno rpm that is enough for it to calculate and it says i'm not even going to look at engine rpm i'm going to calculate what it should be based on that gear ratio. So that change there is very important uh, when you go engine with clutch. It really gets you out of a lot of jams when you only got one good RPM signal, but you have to be a little careful about it. Now, if you get two good RPM signals in the future, you got to make sure you go turn that back on in dyno specs. Now, here we are on our data mic current reading screens, and you can see here we got our dyno RPM, and there is no engine RPM. And that can be a little hard to run your dyno test that way. 
So what we got is we got an option here in preferences. Uh, operation calculations, I believe. Engine RPM is calculated RPM. I'm going to turn that to a yes and then keep that preference setting. And now if I go and click on the current readings, I should have an engine RPM reading here. And this engine RPM is 4.14 times higher than the dyno RPM. And you can see, if we blip the throttle a little bit, now you can read what the theoretical engine RPM is on the engine RPM tack gauge. Now this is only available if you got, I killed the engine there, this is only available if you got the, the pro version of the software. Otherwise, if you just got the basic, you're going to have to go completely on dyno RPM and, and, and figure out ahead of time what dyno RPM gives you a certain engine RPM. Now, why don't we do a comparison? We've done um, this test here with um, just using one RPM, just using dyno RPM here. Okay. Um, you don't, I'm sorry, you don't know that by looking at that. You know it by looking at engine no clutch and the dyno RPM is specified. So let's make a graph. Let's compare torque and horsepower with this test here with the previous test where we used engine RPM and dyno RPM both. And you can see there is a, slight, there is a significant difference here. The one is peaking earlier and such. Um, the one where we're just using, where we're calculating the engine RPM, it's peaking a little bit earlier and stuff, and it's got higher torque numbers. But my guess is that's because we've got the wrong gear ratio in. So what I'm going to do is on graph type, I'm going to change something here, and I'm going to make a time graph, and I'm going to look at clutch converted or in calculate. I'm going to look at calculated gear ratio. Now you can see here that. 4.136, this is the gear ratio we typed in, 4.14. This is the gear ratio that it should be at when we were actually measuring both engine and dyno RPM up here. It should be about more like 4.35. So let's back out of this screen, and this is illustrating an important point. One point is, with our software, if you find a mistake, you can go back and fix it and fix up your data. With a lot of systems, once you make your test, you're done. If you made a mistake beforehand, didn't whatever, had channel calibrations wrong, you're you're stuck. You can't fix it. Let's uh let's go back now and graph corrected flywheel torque and horsepower. And now you can see they're almost on top of each other. The other thing that I just illustrated by doing this is how critical it is to have that gear ratio right. 4.14 wasn't right, and that's why these two tests did not agree. And just to remind you, this test was done right here by measuring both engine and dyno RPM. This test was done by just measuring dyno RPM only and calculating what the engine RPM should be based on that gear ratio. And you can see when you didn't have the gear ratio right, they didn't agree. When we got the gear ratio right, they're almost exactly line on line. So it just lets you know you can still do very accurate work just measuring one RPM. Something I'd like to also illustrate real quickly here is this is the what I was this is the graph I was doing before. Now you can see that the calculated a 4.35 and what I was measuring on the other tests was very close to each other. But I wanted to just illustrate if you go up here, if you just click on that, it sets everything up here so you can make these power curves very quickly. I just want to illustrate that nice little option, load settings for a standard torque and horsepower graph. And it will immediately put you into some good settings so you can get your power curves real quick because that's what you want to do 90% of the time is power curves. That concludes this movie.